speaking about this general class is very perspective in a sense of um, finding some boundless conditions in Gilder spaces and other spaces in which you cannot you can't use theory of for instance of multiplies okay now just basic definitions as you know if you have um, we, are, we will be staying on the unit disk we'll have this class little piece spaces given here and Taylor coefficients are given here and if you rewrite Taylor coefficients in this integral they can then you can state that this integral you can let R go to one and you will have finite limit so if you take this integral over the union disk this integral always exists as improper integral whenever function f is holomorphic function in the union disk from the class h okay so we will keep in mind this issue uh, because we will understand our integrals in in proper sense well these basic examples you know this bourbon type operator it is given with this type of kernel but actually people always write this operator in this form the same right i never saw this type of or, or integral in a in a book in complex analysis but sometimes it, it's very important to rewrite in this form because now you can when differentiating you can apply derivative directly to function f for instance etc um, and the multiplier for this operator is here it's pretty clear because this is actually identity operator on the class of allomorphic functions another important example is operator of fraction calculus you can always rewrite it in two ways and multipliers given here you have this property you can invert this construction so you have differentiation operator fraction differentiation operator you have this property etc so this uh, would be examples of operators from our class um, next example also fractional integral differentiation given by these multipliers um, these operators depend only on also on parameter t which is quite important why it's important because actually if you consider classical operators without this parameter you will not expect the semigroup property to achieve the semigroup property you have to manage this weight this additional parameter for instance you can see formula 4.3 it works like this so it plays a role in some combination of integration must be in the inside in this in this way you'll only achieve the kind of semigroup property and you can clearly see that if you can go from one integration to another you have to use this two parameter fractional integral so this fractional integral also it's not just kind of generalization this integral is also important when you study basal spaces in complex analysis how people study basal type spaces and other spaces they take Berman space and apply some derivatives exactly this ones and obtain results for the other spaces so this playing uh, with this parameter is very important because when you kind of consider weighted spaces um, some shift appear and um, if you manage to calculate um, um, parameters such that you will go from Berman space to Bessel space for instance weight in weighted case then you give you can prove some boundedness of some other properties okay well um, these operators, uh, these operators, uh, these general operators uh, have this uh, integral representation. You can just forget about this radial uh, function because whatever is radial, we can put to the weight and forget about it. So basically, this is the same form as the Marperman operator. And you can also give a representation for. Um, um, fractional differentiation so why i am saying about integral representations because basically uh, we uh, developing a, now a, a theory of integral represented in integral forms our idea in this talk also is to study gilder spaces and mapping properties of operators of such type in gilder spaces 
Uh, in this uh, type of spaces, you cannot use multiplier theory. If you work in um, Bourbon space or some other good space, you can make some um, statements using basing yourself on results from multiplier theory, but not in this case of Gilder space. And besides this, having an operator in integral form sometimes is much more easy to provide conditions because when you know that multiplier condition is not always good to check when it comes to real examples. Okay, so what do we study? Actually, what we study is here, 6.1. We call this uh, integral operator and the mark bierman convolution, and we understand this as a limit. And we always have this, we, for holomorphic function G and F, we always have this symmetrical identity with a kind of symmetry. Uh, this uh, is always true for holomorphic G and F. Um, well, you probably understand why, why we call it Bourbon, because basically Bourbon type operators, Bourbon projection, Bourbon fractional operator are basic examples of these type of operators. But why Gadamer? Uh, you know, fractional calculus actually arised in complex analysis, and this would be the one of the famous um, definition of Adamar composition product. If you have two functions, f and j, allomorphic functions represented by the series, then you can compose this uh, new function and you call this function Adamar, pro uh, Adamar product, composition operator. Uh, well, if you can fix, for instance, g, speaking about like a kernel would be, if, if gn goes to infinity, then you say that this kind of differentiation operator. If gn goes to zero, then you say then gn is integration operator. But in general, this construction is called the um, product composition. Uh, and uh, it's known that it possesses this uh, integral representation over the circle. Uh, so that's why, of course, our operators also reduced to multiplier form. No doubt that you can always write. And as we know that we can pass to the limit when r goes to infinity, uh, we conclude that this integral that we consider always exists as improper integral when, whenever f and j is holomorphic. So, basically, this construction, 9.1, we call Adamar Bergman convolution of functions f and j. Okay. Um, but actually, well, in previous slides, f and j were independent functions, can say just holomorphic functions. But you, as I said, you can fix one function, call it kernel. Like in this case, we fix function j and call it kernel. So let, let us consider operator with the kernel j of this type. Of course, you can rewrite in this form or in this form also. And of course, it has a representation as a multiplier operator with this multiplier given here. Vice versa, if you have an operator that acts on polynomials like this, multiplier operator, then you can construct corresponding kernel just by applying operator k to the Berman kernel. So the kernel j in our convolution, is nothing but application the operator k to this Berman uh, kernel. Okay? So this would be about the operators with holomorphic kernels. Uh, of course, it makes sense to consider now non holomorphic kernels. That's why I used now k instead of g. Um, let uh, k be not holomorphic, but uh, we cannot treat this operator in improper sense already. Uh, so we have to impose this condition that k belongs to L1 at least. Uh, but still we can construct multipliers for this operator given by this formula, 12.2, of course. And of course we can construct a holomorphic kernel. If you have operator with non-galomorphic kernel, then you can find another function g 
glomorphic kernel. How you do this? You just apply Bedman projection here. You apply Bedman projection to this non glomorphic kernel, and you have glomorphic kernel that generates the same operator K. Kernels of this type, when you have some radial, of course, non glomorphic part and um, glomorphic part K. Um, in this case, um, also this symmetry formula holds. So whatever you put radial here or here does matter. You can move W here and Z W here, like in this formula. And this is very important because, as I said, this all sometimes it helps to do calculus. And why is this type of kernel is also important? Because inside of this class, now you have chocolate separators with radial um, uh, symbols. Toplet separator is known to act on function f as you have symbol a, you multiply function f by symbol a, and then to, when you multiply by non holomorphic symbol, you go out of the space, and then to go back to the space, you apply Bergman projection. So th this would be toplet separator, and its integral form is here. You can see this is another example of adamar bergman convolution with this type of kernel. How much time I have? Oh, okay. okay. Also, if you do some changes of variable, then you from operator with uh, opera the Mark Berman operator, you can go to operator with uh, with homogeneous kernel. Operator with homogeneous kernel is an integral operator with kernel K calligraphic such that K calligraphic possesses these two properties. It's an homogeneous of order minus two, which coincides with the dimension of the space, and it, it, it is invariant with rotation. We know many criteria of boundedness of these operators with homogeneous kernels, but if we apply directly this criteria, we can have a raw, raw, raw results. We, we can, we, we will obtain more precise results without using this theory and just with playing with the fact that function on which we act is a holomorphic function. So it is exactly in this theorem, Jung theorem, uh, it says that under these conditions, you have this boundedness condition, you have this boundedness estimate, and here F is holomorphic, K is not necessarily holomorphic, but when proving this theorem, we essentially apply, apply uh, the property of uh, function, of holomorphic function. Hello? Also, we have um, uh, other results. Yeah. I think it's next speaker. Okay. Звук не слышно. These two A and B spaces coincide. For instance, when you apply 
when you apply both conditions, both Zygmunt conditions, you have that these spaces coincide with each other, so they don't coincide in some particular cases. I will be speaking later about. Okay, so space of type A and space of type B, I will, I will refer to these uh, two spaces as Gölder spaces. Um, and what kind of operator? This kind of generalization of fractional operator given by this integral operator in, in, in particular case, when your characteristic coincide with this, you obtain a regular integration <laughs> operator. So we will be interested in, interested in the properties, mapping properties in Gölder spaces, and basically the theorem is here. We can prove these uh, mapping properties between B spaces and between A spaces by, uh, under these uh, conditions that I will not read these conditions, but you can read it here on the slide. Okay, and this would be for a general operator, not only fractional operator, but uh, kind of generalization when you have when you have a characteristic function in the kernel. Um, for fractional operator, you can, you, before you have just mapping property, but you can, for fractional, for particular case, you can um, have a precise uh, description of image given in theorem 22.15. Um, and of course, uh, since we study Gölder spaces, it's good to just step down to the classical case, just to show that what would what would this mean for classical case? This 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 theory means nothing like this. Okay, Colory. Um, now we actually want to generalize Gölder spaces. Uh, consider more general cases of, of Gölder spaces. To this end, we had to introduce general notion of generalized uh, uh, adamar berman convolution. It means the same with the uh, uh, only uh, fact that in the kernel we have extra variable z, and this extra variable actually uh, allows us to do the same as without this variable. For instance, we can treat it as a proper integral. We can have this symmetric property even with this z variable. I will show you why it's important to have this extra variable inside of the kernel. And since we're speaking about what kind of operators, uh, variable exponent, uh, integration operator, you have a variable power alpha here. You see, it has also decomposition like a multiplier, but it's not a multiplier because you see you have a function alpha of z here and here. And this is the same as what appears in fractional calculus of variable order, as I mentioned, Professor, uh, as I mentioned, work by Professor Stamko and Stefan Ross, so they introduced this variable exponent integration differentiation, but you stick them together, you will not have an identity operator because of this clear reason. You have to decompose this new function to have, uh, and then apply, you cannot just invert multiplier because it's not a tailored position. You see, maybe it's a good open question for anyone in this auditorium, how to construct, how to basically construct an inversion of, of up to some operator, maybe compact, maybe. Okay. Um, so variable exponent spaces, you just go from regular modulus of continuity to this uh, variable modulus and you have similar conditions written there. You have similar definition of Gölder space, okay, with this modulus of continuity. And of course, you have similar definition of B-type spaces, also with using modulus of continuity. So, for instance, here the derivative is bounded by this value, which is it changes not only when z goes to the unit circle, but also it can be different on the boundary of the unit disk. Um, and it, this is quite kind of important because you see, you can speak about why it's important to study variables, spaces, etc. 
maybe it's a good question for any of the most spaces, but for the earliest spaces, this question is quite, quite understandable. We have to study some kind of boundary value over some in many cases you impose boundary values using further conditions. So why don't you use different further type of different type of annuity of using codes? It's quite a natural idea. And when we speak about models of continuity, more generalized models of continuity, which you have there. Actually, from this case you can go easy to classify models of continuity. So it contains both cases, classical models of continuity and also variable exponent aspects, variable kind of aspects. So in our study, you can have the same statements. Well, also you have to introduce uh, variable um, uh, Zygmunt type conditions. Pretty much the same, but with uh, parameter with variable parameter as a power, and uh, of course you have to think about uh, inclusions of one space A space to B space and vice versa. Under this zygmunt time conditions, you can prove these inclusions. Of course, we have more results, but I will not speak about these results now. And uh, well, again, come back to this. Uh, operator now with the characteristic function also depending on z here so it's variable case and some quite um, uh, quite uh, complicated conditions we have to impose but for instance if you consider particular case uh, case of fractional integration of variable order then these conditions can be rewritten in this simple form. Okay, so under these conditions you have this bounded these properties of this generalized, generalized fractional integration um, operator uh, between B spaces and between A spaces. And I forgot to mention that uh, we are speaking about the case when we admit degeneracy. So now when we have parameter, variable parameter, then you understand this variable parameter can go to zero and you can have Berman projection. And Berman projection in, whole, in allomorphic function is just identity operator. So you can expect uh, that kind of good operator. But what happens when you, you go close to zero, when real part go close to zero and far close to far, what's happened? It's kind of very hard question. So we split it, our study in two cases. One case when we admit degeneracy, in this case, we have to impose more conditions on modules of continuity. And the second case, when we don't admit degeneracy, we impose less conditions, less restrictions on modules of continuity, but we can prove a result with this. Uh, uh, but we can prove less um, weaker results, not so strong. Um, okay. How much time I have? Okay, maybe I skip slides. Well, uh, we can all also treat this kind of um, power logarithmic characteristics, have uh, theorem of boundedness of this type of operators, and also precise description of case of classical variable pent spaces. Let me don't speak about the slides because we don't have much time. Now, um, I'm coming to the case when we don't allow alpha to be degenerate. I recall the separator that we study. Um, and the result we have here, first of all, as customary in this case, now we use technique used it in real analysis developed in papers by Samko, Stefan Samko, Natalia Samko, Boris Fakulov, and other people. So we prove a kind of Zygmunt type estimate and on base of the type estimate, we can show this boundedness uh, uh, property, boundedness property for fractional integration of variable order in spaces A. I am not speaking about spaces B because this technique from real analysis is not applicable for this type of spaces. Uh, so this will be all 
I wanted to tell you. I just wanted to save some time because I guess Professor Samkom may be with us, may say some words. Can we have can we have them on? Okay, I'm. Can you hear us? Yes, we hear. I, I just finished this talk. I hope it will be trans. I hope it was translated on the internet. But I, I saved some time because uh, we agreed that you say some words about. Yes. Okay. So do you hear me? Yes, perfectly. Yeah. O okay. So I would uh, like really to add uh, uh, some words. Well, uh, first, uh, my collaboration with Alexei started uh, years ago. And we did uh, uh, a lot of different things during the last uh, maybe seven years or so. And uh, what Alexei presented here uh, was uh, obtained just recently during uh, this year, previous year. And it uh, was really a pleasure for me to, to work with Alexei during these uh, years as a new topic for me. Uh, with regards to uh, concretely to this uh, topic, maybe let's uh, let's compare with what we know in uh, real analysis. Uh, we know, according to the uh, old result of Hermander, that every operator which commutes with translation may be represented as a convolution operator with some uh, distribution. Uh, here, what uh, was presented with respect to this uh, Adamar Bergman apparatus uh, is a kind of analog. Uh, what is done here is show that uh, every operator which commutes now with rotation may be represented as such kind of convolution, but we already do not need to uh, use um, distributions because uh, we work with holomorphic functions. But of course, uh, some analog of distribution is revealed here because we understand convolutions in a special uh, sense. So this is just to, to underline uh, such an analogy. And of course, uh, uh, integral representation uh, indeed is very important. Uh, we understand very well that uh, if, for example, we know that uh, the kernel is very good, we just apply for uh, Young here, we do not need to know anything about complicated behavior of multipliers. Uh, and uh, let me also emphasize that uh, the fractional operators which were used uh, in uh, harmonic analysis in, uh, in the unique disk, uh, they were given by uh, series expansions. And uh, it was really a little bit surprising for us that uh, we managed to find explicit integral representation in terms of elementary functions. Of course, if we can always construct a kernel as a, as a series, then in general it will be some special function. But fortunately, this um, popular interdifferential operator proved to be convolution with elementary functions. That was a little, a little bit uh, inter interesting for us. And of course, as Alexei uh, told and emphasized, it was very important uh, to uh, deal uh, with apparatus on, operate, uh, on function spaces different from the spaces. Thank you. We, we are done. Let's think. Speakers, speakers. speakers.